David Bizard here, and you are watching Paratech 10. Our sole intent at Paratech 10 is to convey usable tech that's useful to both the professionals and amateurs. I, I use the word amateurs, I always wince when I say amateurs. I should say those people who don't do it for a living but can be equally as good as many professionals. Well, here we are again on Uncle Tony's Mission Impossible project. In this episode, Andy and I are going to see just how much we can wring out of the stock and very puny 256 CFM two barrel. Now, we're not going to take it to the ultimate in this episode, but we are going to look into where the restrictions occur and see if we can eliminate those restrictions or at least reduce them to a minimum. So let's get started here. Our first move was to remove the choke plate. Andy, start the ball rolling. So if you remember in our last video when we were dealing with Project Mission Impossible's 318 two-barrel Carter carburetor, we managed to pull out 256-ish CFM, and that's because we had about 15 to 16 CFM leakage in the system. Well, DV and I were back over here, and we're going to do some mods starting with the basics, getting into the intricate details of this carburetor and try to find out where exactly the restriction is because when it comes to doing this type of stuff with a carburetor it's really no different than doing an intake port. We're trying to find the most restriction and see what we can do about alleviating that restriction. easier to see the uh, butterflies yeah. now. So where do I okay, go? Okay Andy, fire away. We electronics. Yeah. Right. Picked up six CFM by removing the by choke. By removing plate. the choke, we picked up six CFM, right? Well, what's that percentage-wise? That's two and a half percent. Yeah. Right. So don't say much six, six CFM, but when you say we've got two and a half percent more airflow, now that's something. Okay. Next move. What do you think? I'm thinking. I'll let your idea best. We we'll take the we take the butterflies out, streamline the shafts, and put them back. Okay. Right. Right. That's our next move. Well, there's something else. If you look in here, yep. There is a massive amount of gasket that's overhanging in there. Oh yeah. Do you see that? I mean, it, it's horrible. Yeah. Now, folks, you probably can't see this, but there is right. But the, the gasket, the hole in the gasket is smaller than the hole in the carburetor. Yeah. So it's probably, uh, well actually no, it's a, it's misaligned more than anything. Yeah, it's misaligned. Right, well, okay, so let's do this. Let, we'll do two things at once. We'll align the gasket and we'll skinny down these and see what that does. Okay. Right? Let's do it. Right, we're going to do it. Well, it turns out we had a slight change of plan there. Between that shoot and the next shoot, Andy had a better idea. 
He does much better than Ford at this. You know, Ford's better idea. Restricts it. And then see how much the butterfly assembly restricts the air. Once we've got the number for the base plate with no butterfly in it, we know that that is going to be the maximum airflow that the carburetor can have short of putting in bigger butterflies, which not for now, but maybe down the road, we'll try that. First, we remove the base plate, like so, to uh, get a handle on what the butterflies represent in terms of an absolute uh, flow resistance. So that's the first thing. Now, whilst I've got this off, you can see how the gasket is overlapping here. Right, there it is in the correct position. There is a good sixteenth of an inch of overlap around here and here. So let's see what that cost in terms of flow. For this first test, we're going to cheat a little. I'm going to flow the base plate here with the gasket in place, but I'm not going to put an entry ring on here nor am I going to put an entry ring on there. So although it won't represent a true flow figure, it will give us the percentage drop that this is causing. So here we go. escapade revealed that that gasket overhang was cutting our flow by 6 CFM. With the gasket in place it flowed about 290. With the gasket removed it flowed about 296, maybe 297. So that was power being lost or potential power being lost there. Now let's get on to some serious tests and see what the base plate flows in stock form. First Andy and I flowed the uh, base plate with the butterflies and shafts all in and that flowed 321 CFM with the radius entry. The next test we did was to remove the throttle shaft and butterflies, still with the radius entry and flow that. Here's what we saw. For this test, I've taken out the butterfly and the butterfly shaft. It's not really commonly realized how much restriction this causes. So we're gonna address that issue after we see how much we gain. Results of that was a clear 50 CFM more with the butterfly and shaft removed. That is a pretty big gain and it does demonstrate how much the butterfly and shaft restricts the flow. Now that 371, 72 CFM that we saw represents the absolute maximum we can expect this carburetor to flow. I shouldn't say expected there. It represents the absolute maximum that it could flow. And that is assuming that everything else presents no restriction. That's not gonna happen. So our goal would be to make 
our target figure as close to 371 as possible. Our first job then is to address the aerodynamics that we're seeing on the butterfly and shaft. Fortunately, that's not a difficult job to do. Tedious may be, but not difficult. So let's get going on that. After taking the shaft out of the carburetor, your first move is to saw here and here so that you can take the screw head end or the screw head side off from the shaft. Right, so all we're left with is the threaded parts here. Then just give the shaft a quick clean up this side. Now I'm jumping a few steps here because I think they're pretty obvious. So the next shot I'm going to show you is the shaft reinstalled with the areas between the screw holes cut down and the butterflies knife edged. Here's how it's done. Shaft. Here's a shot of the butterfly and shaft assembly after I've modified it. I've knife edged the butterfly here leaving just a very thin strip around here. This has been knife edged on the downward side. Right, the top side is still stock. Between the screws I've streamlined it by cutting it down and radius, making sure it's got a good radius and a sharp edge where it meets here. Now you will see some high performance carburetors where they've just slapped the shaft. That does give a little bit more flow but it's way short of what this does here. This works pretty well. When I've installed the screws I've filed them off so that they are flush like this. Right, now it's time to test the flow. Well here we are ready to go so Andy push the button. Well, isn't it just amazing what a little bit of streamlining will do? With the stock butterfly and shaft installed, flow was 321. With the streamlined butterfly and shaft installed, it was 365. And that's tested against a maximum possible of 372. So we've gone from losing 52 CFM to losing seven. Fair bit of improvement there. Now let's see how that all works out when we put the rest of the carburetor on in stock form. Well here's a carb all loaded on the bench. It is now stock other than the choke being removed and the butterflies and shaft being streamlined. So let's see where we're at now. Okay, well we saw 305 on that uh, test and uh, now if we subtract our 16 CFM for leakage because that setup had that leakage still, we get um, 289 CFM. So we're up from 256 to 289. Still got a couple of easy mods to do here so let's look at streamlining the air entry horn right that comes off easily and it's easily reworked so let's tackle that next here is what we did to the uh, air inlet 
Now if you compare this with the stock one, you'll see this is greatly smoothed out. Right, uh, didn't take too long to do. You have to be careful about not carving off too much metal because this is softer than aluminum. Anyway, it was worth the effort. So we'll take the boosters out, get the screwdriver in there, and once we've taken these out we're going to flow it without the boosters, and we're guessing here that this is going to make a big difference to the flow, which I don't think will be much of a surprise to anyone. Let's take that out. We'll put that back in, just like that, so that it, we've, so that we've only taken out the boosters. Replace this, and let's see what that does. I think we can safely say that's about 334 CFM without the booster. We still have the uh, uh, approach to the booster being a bit untidy, so I think it could still be a bit more than that. But we're running out of easy mods to do here, so I'm going to just show you some simple booster prep that should add maybe 3 or 4 CFM and boost our booster signal. Now I have to say this is somewhat of a fiddly piece to do. A couple of points I want to raise here. Firstly, the booster works better when this edge here is sharp, right? They can't do that in this type of molding. They can't make a sharp edge. It won't, uh, it won't hold. So make sure you do that. This piece here, Make sure it runs smoothly into the booster, not like it did stock. Now, when you come to cut these here and here, make sure you do not break into the fuel passage, which is here. You only have a thin piece left along here and around there. When you do this bit here, see if you can round it off into there. You've got enough metal to streamline it. Right now, same goes for the exit of the boosters. Make right. sure they've got a, a sharp edge and they go right out to an edge. And uh, any flash marks on the exterior, cut those off. Now, the best tool to do this with is one of those eighth die grinder Dremel type things and get the little doodads that go into the corners here. It is fiddly, but as you will see, gets quite a good result. Oh, and we increase the booster signal as well, which helps drivability. There's some other things that we're going to do down the road, but um, drivability we should not be sacrificing, right? So here we go. Let us install this and see where we are now.
Well, let me sum up where we are at present on this uh, carburetor. Obviously, we've increased the flow from a puny 256 CFM to a slightly less pruny 309 CFM. That's all good. Now, carburetors are meant to mix fuel and air in the right proportion. You may well ask how this may have affected its metering capabilities or its fuel curve. Well, first off, doing the butterflies as we've described increases the booster signal. So, in the main, there's usually just a little more fuel needed, right? So that usually means just a slight increase in main jet size. And, and that's usually it. Note the word usually. Now, the other thing we've got to deal with here is the air correctors. Because the booster signal is now higher, we may need to, at the top end, we may need to put in a slightly larger air corrector. As for the transition slot, that may need to be either made wider or longer. We won't know yet until we get this thing on the dyno. Uh, now, idle circuits, they, the idle mixture with whatever's in there won't have changed. However, what will have changed is how it comes off idle. So we'll need to look at how the idle jet works in conjunction with the transition slot and with the idle air corrector. My guess here, my best guess, and it is a guess, is we may need to put a slightly larger idle jet in and then put a slightly smaller air corrector in. That's in conjunction with the wider slot. Now, I'm looking at a worst case scenario here. There are occasions when the jetting of the carburetor barely changes with these mods. It's not like the mods we're going to do, which will completely alter the carburetor, but will probably boost airflow to somewhere around 335 CFM. Now, I'm quoting you these figures in uh, four barrel. To compare it with a two barrel, if we get to 335 CFM, what we've essentially got here, let me just run my trusty calculator here. Right, and we will see that 335 times 1.4 equals. Basically, what we've got on a two barrel rating is 470 CFM, right? So we are falling nearer the flow capability of a 500 CFM Holly two barrel uh, than the 350 Holly two barrel, right? So with that flow rating, our power should not be restricted. Our goal of 318 horsepower should not be restricted by the carburetor. There will be other factors that will come into play. So we should be able to get to our uh, 315 horsepower with the carburetor as we've modified it here. But hey, I'm not content with 318 horsepower. I want to see some more. Anyway, the last part of this is uh, in the conclusion is that um, Andy is going to go through the, um, the jetting on this so that you can see where the jets are and what may need to be done. Right, so I'm going to hand that over to Andy. So go and see his channel at uh, Unity Motorsports, right? And he should be handling the jetting side of it and why those jets need to be changed. Don't forget to subscribe, like, share, and let's not forget 
this video is all for St. Jude's. So please join our community so that we increase the awareness of the fact that this engine is going to be raffled off, right? Trust me, by the time it's done with all the mods, we're finally going to end up with it because we're not stopping at this basic build. We're just going through that. At the final mods, it's going to have aluminum heads on it and all the good stuff. I would think that we'll have somewhere around about a 500 horsepower street machine. Share all this with everybody else out there. Oh, and meanwhile, some of the parts that we're at, we end up with, like when we get the carburetor sorted out, that will be raffled off. When we get the head sorted out, those will be raffled off, like the iron heads, that is, and uh, the intake manifold, and so on and so forth, the camshaft. Everything that we're left over with, with our final build, will be raffled off for St. Jude's. Let's set our goal high here. This means that you will be supporting St. Jude's if you subscribe. Remember, you're trying to save kids, so just do it. Thank you for watching.